Right, so let's dive straight into this. Taking off the case for the run cam thumb is really, really easy. You've only got sort of four or five uh, little screws and a bit of sort of elbow grease uh, brings it straight out. And what you end up with when you've done that is this. So we've got the PCB and obviously the stock lens. And before you go any further, what you want to do is two things if you want to do this mod. The first is remove the connector, or if you don't want to do that, trim it down. And this will basically just help it slip into the case. In my case, I've just taken the connector completely off. I didn't mess around desoldering it. I just clipped it until it basically fell off, which is really easy to do. And I've just connected the red positive and the black, which is the ground, to the board. And obviously it's labelled up, you can see it there. And the reason for doing that is twofold. One, it gets it into the case, but two, I never liked the stock one because when you were sort of trying to pull it out from um, the, the case that the camera comes in, um, you always sort of ended up tugging and pulling um, at the little connector and it's going to come off anyway. So this way I've just made that nice and easy and obviously if I bust this connector it's nice and easy just to change it. So the, before you go any further the first thing you want to do is just con conformal coat the PCB. And the reason to do that is really not to make it waterproof but just because we're running this bare just to give it a bit of protection. So a thin coat of silicon conformal coating will basically just protect everything and when you're doing that just keep well away from the SD card slot and the button because if you get conformal coating under either of those parts uh, your days are numbered as nothing will work and basically all you do to get it in the mount is just warm up the mount um, with a heat gun or a solder or um, a hairdryer basically you what you want to do is thread that wire through the slot through the back and then push the whole thing in like so that way and then pull the end bit around I can't show you at the moment because this guy isn't warm um, it's cold, but if you heat it up, it, it pulls around nice and easy. What I might do is change this mount because currently the way that the back plate is covered is basically with this little additional bit. And that sort of sits over there. And then we have one screw hole there and one screw hole there, which go into the back of this camera and hold the lens on. But having played around with this, I think I might be able to get away by um, basically completely enclosing this back area because I didn't realize when I was designing this that I'd be able to get it through the front. Um, so that's a job for another day. But yeah, everything works nicely. Um, you can see the button glowing up um, and obviously push it. Now, the reason I wanted to do this mod is the Runcam Thumb Pro is a very light camera. It's about sort of 16 and a half grams with all its gubbins on. And that's fine. There's not a huge amount to, of weight to lose once you've removed these things. What we end up with is a camera that weighs sort of 8.65 grams. So we've roughly halved the weight. But the reason why I wanted to do this in the first place is if you take the run cam with all its gubbins, cases, etc. And the lens cover and all the rest of it, the screws and bits and bobs. When you take that 16 and a half grams, you immediately need to mount it to a quad. And if you use the little one that it comes with and if your quad fits this little connector or 3D printed mount that it comes with, you're immediately adding on a load more weight. And when you sort of add the additional screws and bits and bobs, 
you're ending up with a weight of about sort of 23 and a half grams. However, this particular mount, while printed very nicely, doesn't really offer any real protection, bearing in mind it only covers half of it. And the base that they give you, even if you can use it, is super flimsy and it's not gonna last. So you will immediately end up, like everybody else, printing a better one, which offers more protection. And when you do that, you're taking the weight up to 25 grams or so. So the purpose of this for me was to remove all of this gubbins from it, take it back down to that 8.65 grams, and then basically make a little 3D mount like so which fits the Naked Thumb Pro and basically shaves off as much weight as possible. So I immediately go from 25 grams to 13. And then if I use the little 3D printed uh, ND filter holder, I end up with a weight of 16.9. So essentially the net weight of my mount has become zero. And that is the entire purpose of this. What I'm really doing is shaving nine or 10 grams off the mounting solution I had previously, namely this one, and getting a nice simple mount, which offers arguably more protection than the original case did. And allows me basically just to fly this little thumb pro on the only quads that I would ever fly it on, which are namely two and a half inch and below little cine quads. Now I've done this twice. This is the original thumb pro with its stock lens. And you will know if you've watched any reviews that the stock lens is 150, 155 degrees field of view, which is very narrow for um, an action cam. And when you're flying normally, that's not so much of a problem. But if you want to use this guy with gyro flow, which it seems everybody wants to do, you'll soon find that when gyro flow does its stuff and crops inwards, you end up with a really narrow field of view. Um, people have been messing around with loads of different lenses, trying to find one that works better. And so far, the honest answer is I haven't found one that works perfectly. I've seen people using the RC 18G lens, which is the one, I can't remember which one it is, which is one of these. That one and posting fairly decent results but when I test it what I get is cropped edges of my field from my field of view i.e the lens is obviously seeing the barrel because it's not designed for this particular camera so after much messing around I went down a different route because when I got this one from Your FPV, I forgot that I bought another one with a lot of points I had from Banggood. So I had an extra one to play with. And after messing around with lots of different lenses, the lens that I actually ended up using, at least initially, is an old knackered lens that I had from um, a stripped down Hero 7, which was basically broken. Um, and these were just sort of sat in my bin ports. And when I was messing around with this lens, the lens itself does not focus in. So if we look at the footage barrel, um, and neither does the um, does the DJI FPV uh, lenses that we, we like so much. So <laughs> basically what I've done is I've removed the original lens holder and epoxied this new entire lens unit 
on, which weighs a couple of grams more than the initial one did do. And when I was testing it, just looking at the lens via um, the webcam function, it seemed to work really, really well. However, I'm not sure whether I haven't made an error here. And the reason for that is that the sensor on the Thumb Pro is, is 16 by 9, so it's longer this way than it is this way. But you'll notice that when I epoxied this lens on, it's kind of the narrower part is here, and obviously the the the, the lens itself, uh, sorry, the um, the centre itself is 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 longer along this way, and what that seems to have ended up with, although I couldn't see it when I was originally focusing the camera, is sometimes it's really really hazy, and I don't know if that's just because I've mounted it essentially the wrong way around, um, and it's sort of diffusing the light that's coming into the sensor. I honestly don't know, um, so maybe I need to sort of clock this round um, and run it widthways um, but the reason I originally set it in this way is simply because it fitted perfectly in that um, and if I turn it around um, there's a fair amount of different components so yeah so that's where I am right now if we look at footage this is footage from the stock camera and then we've got footage from this guy Okay, so first of all, we've got footage from the stock camera, 2.7K, 60 frames per second, ISO set at 200 and an ND8. And as usual around here, it's super windy. I was hoping that this building site would be a bit sheltered, but it's not. So we've got some sort of minor jello. Uh, but you can see that the stock lens is absolutely fine for normal flying. But look at what happens when I add even a very low level of stabilization in gyroflow. Both the camera and gyroflow are bang up to date. Gyroflow is 1.2 and the camera is on the latest firmware that fixed a lot of the issues. And you'll see straight away that even though I'm really using the barest amount of smoothing, uh, the image has been really, really, really cropped inwards. And while it's still usable, it really highlights how bad the quality is on this camera at 2.7K. It, it still looks okay, we've just got a very, very narrow field of view. Now this is the GoPro lens, and you'll see straight away it's a much, much warmer image, and it appears softer, um, and I've messed around with the focus as much as I can, but it's definitely a, a softer image. Um, and you'll get this sort of hazing, as you can see now, um, as we fly into the light, and then it sort of clears up when you move away from the sun. Um, and you can just see the field of view is much, much wider, uh, more what we used to, um, and much nicer to the eye, in, in my opinion. Um, interestingly, a lot of these effects disappear when you colour grade it. Um, I tend to run the Runcam Thumb Pro just on stock colour, because it's fine. But this one really needs colour correcting. But you can see when I do exactly the same gyro footage, gyro floor settings, that we st still retain a lot of the image. Using um, a fixed zoom because I don't like the way that it zooms in and out. And again, I'm using a uh, sort of relatively minimal amount of smoothing here. Um, and for whatever reason, uh, gyro floor doesn't like this footage as much as it did the previous one. Um, it's sort of jiggling around a lot more noticeably. Um, noticeably and I'm using basically the Hero 7 lens profile which might be something to do with it I have got other footage which has worked out better but let's just forget the slight wobbles that we're seeing here um, and just sort of focus on obviously the much much larger field of view than we had on the previous camera and finally we've got the GoPro footage or should I say the GoPro lens footage and all I've done is hit uh, basically the auto colour correct on DaVinci Resolve 18 um, and you'll see it looks a lot nicer, a lot yellow, uh, a, a lot ye less yellowy than the original footage did whether you like that or not is a different matter um, but it does sort of help a little bit with that sort of greasy lens look um, and I've also added a very small amount of sharpening 
So that's it really. I think I need to sort of maybe try uh, this lens seated correctly the right way to see if it sort of reduces this smearing. Um, but I certainly like it better than the very narrow field of view on the standard camera. And certainly if you're looking to use uh, gyro floor, which to be honest, I'm not on this sort of footage. Uh, gyro floor for me would be for sort of cinematic work. And if I was doing sort of cinematic work, I wouldn't be using this little camera. Um, so, and, and the issue for me with gyro floor is if you have a, a badly flying little quad that's prone to lots of vibrations, gyro floor doesn't seem to be able to handle that particularly well. Certainly nowhere near the likes of GoPro Zone Real Steady or Hyper, uh, Hyper Smooth or even DJI's Rocksteady. Um, it just can't cope with that sort of micro jitters that you get on, on little quads. So you're, in my opinion, you're better just using this camera uh, the way it is. Um, and it's fine if the wind's you know, not, too, um, not, not too heavy um, and you're in a relatively sheltered area. So yeah, that's it from me. Hope that was useful for some people. Um, the links to the files are in the Thingiverse description, or should I say at least uh, that the, the files for the stock camera are. I haven't bothered with the Hero 7 because I can't imagine anybody's going to do that apart from myself. Um, but everything else is there. Um, and if you are sort of struggling and you want to create um, something yourself or just change the base on, on this particular uh, model there is one without a base on it it's super easy to do in Tinkercad and Tinkercad is basically a, a free uh, sort of almost made for children uh, online web-based uh, 3d modeling software and you can literally model up a new base in seconds um, so if you're into flying and you've got a 3d printer I highly recommend you go and have a look at it cheers guys thanks bye, -bye.